Your Excellency, um, it's a tremendous honor and pleasure to be here at the United Nations Assembly once again on International Day of Women in Science. I can't begin without acknowledging Her Royal Highness Princess Nisreen El Hashemite, who has been a staunch advocate of the STEM for girls and women with the goal of getting us a seat at all the tables where decisions are made, in all the labs where solutions are created, and in all the schools where minds are strengthened. From my start here in 2018, I have been seeing that there's a measurable positive impact of this session every year in moving us forward, as evidenced in the outcome documents and as evidenced in the testimony of our wonderful um, scientists from the blind scientist panel who said that the books are being translated into Braille at a much higher pace than they ever were before because of the efforts of Brasset. Today, we are here to contribute to solutions as benefactors rather than beneficiaries. That already feels wonderful. To answer your question, I want to leave you today with three ideas. Interdisciplinary dependence, responsibility for unintended consequences, and investing with the next 100 or 1,000 years in view. So I am the CEO of an investment firm in the Silicon Valley. In a world where wisdom is transferred by memes nowadays, I will start with a popular one from Silicon Valley. Technology is exponential, humans are not. While this is true, what does it really mean? We can't completely fathom the consequences of our innovations and developments in science and technology. The applications and the shape that they take often surprises us. Our culture and society cannot catch up fast enough to the technologies that we create. So is this dangerous? Well, in the history of innovation, we find that the problems created by one invention often become the inspiration for another innovator to solve, leaving us with more benefit for society. So why must we think about the unintended consequences now? Well, because the approach that we talked about was possibly sensible in a world where knowledge, expertise, and roles in science and society were clearly divided into silos. Today, more than ever before in history, we are knowledgeable about our world beyond our specialties. We do not need to pay the price of innovation's unintended consequences. I am an investor in technology and science focused on low orbit earth, quantum computing, biotech, health, cybersecurity. You didn't hear the words water or climate in my list, but I hold myself responsible for them. Our economic, social, and climatic health are codependent. Our investment intentions and outcomes should and must be aligned to reward this. Um, how else can we benefit from interdependent um, collaborations, Green Sense Prize recipient, Dr. Kizmekia Corbett, who was at the NIH at the start of the pandemic, collaborated with Moderna to help create a vaccine in an unprecedented 66 days. Innovations in gene sequences, computational biology software, and support of regulatory bodies were the partnership that yielded this result. Interdisciplinary breakthroughs are challenging us to become stakeholders and take responsibility for our actions no matter what we do. Finally, to go further, innovation requires even more codependence. Adoption of technology has become a little bit faster for humans as staying we're staying malleable a little longer. Perhaps thanks to Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, we got used to updates. However, for companies creating powerful solutions for disease, climate, and human progress, success is not just about devising technological and scientific solutions. Companies continue to create solutions and products that render their own innovations of 1.0 obsolete. Their innovation outpaces the ability of the company to stay financially feasible. This is where United Nations, member states, and public and private sectors can cooperate and help each other. We look to organizations like RACIT, United Nations, and other partners that are present here today to guide us and pave the way for not just sustainable, but exponential progress. And I will end with the thousand years in view. By long-term investment and policy view, I mean 100 years, 1,000 years. For policymakers, while data makes our world more predictable, it can also create biases. A policy guided entirely by data instead of principle can also lead itself to short-term view. We need to be cognizant of this responsibility and strike a balance as we consider policy for the next 100 years. In venture capital, long-term is assumed five to seven year exit horizon, maybe 10. We don't think very long-term. As investors, some days I feel like we keep investing in efficiency to save time. So in a hundred years, we will have more time. Good, what will we use that time for? We want Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to make efficiency gains. So long-term gain will be to have more inclusive wealth. Good, but what will we do that with that? 
the fact is we can't entirely imagine the world a thousand years from now. So, for, so we can't really plan for it. Our best chance is education. If you look at the history of human progress, it is punctuated by increases in knowledge. We have created more knowledge in the last 150 years than we did in the last 10,000 years. We're living in an incredible time in history. Let's not take our own ideas and the ideas of the people of our time so lightly. We're uniquely positioned to think about the next 100 years when we invest. I think Elon Musk thinks a little bit like 100 years, and we need more of that. The most obvious SDG that may save our planet and all the other sustainable development goals of United Nations and humanity is SDG for education. With encouraging policies, we in the private sector can also make meaningful contributions towards increases in knowledge and exploration, and in turn, solutions. We can solve the water crisis.